David, um, let me begin with uh, the victims here. Uh, Hannah St. Juliana, 14 years old. Tate Meyer, 16 years old. Madison Baldwin, 17 years old. Justin Schilling, 17 years old. They are all dead. Their dear friends at the high school are living, who are still with us, are living with that agony that they are all dead. Uh, as you know, those students at the school are in a state of shock. What, what do you know about what they're experiencing and what they will be experiencing? The unimaginable, Lawrence, frankly. Um, every community is different. Every person is affected differently by this. Um, I can tell you that the only way having, you know, even yesterday I was, I received a, a, a DM from somebody uh, who has a, you know, had a relative that went through the shooting there. Um, and I actually talked to them just about, you know, what happens in the aftermath of these things. And frankly, there is nothing right to be said. The only thing that I can think about is how can we prevent these horrible instances from happening in the first place? Um, because there really is no way to recover um, for, for really anyone, because there's nothing that can change these things uh, in the first place besides preventing them. David, the last time you were on this program, you talked about the fact that as we were speaking, there were future victims out there who didn't know at that time that they were going to be going through this, either going through what you went through as a survivor or people out there who were going to be dead as a result of the next incident like this. Uh, that's certainly the case tonight, that there are future victims out there in communities around the country who don't know now that they are waiting for this to happen. Yeah, there are. And it's heartbreaking, Lawrence, doing this work um, with young people across the country. What's really been devastating for me to see is in 2018, you know, when we started at, in the wake of the Parkland shooting, it's one of the largest youth movements in American history. Uh, people told us, that's great that you're marching, but you need to vote. So we did. We went out and voted in the, at the highest rate ever in a non-presidential midterm in American history, and then the highest rate ever in 2020. And still what we're seeing is that the movement isn't broken. It's our government that is deeply, deeply broken right now because we can't even protect our own kids, for God's sake. Um, it's unbelievable. And I, I think what we need to realize with this is simply being sad about it, um, as heartbreaking as it is, isn't what's going to change this. Because if that was the case, these things would have ended a long time ago. They would have ended way before Parkland. Um, people need to be, frankly, I think, enraged and have righteous indignation about the fact that these things continue happening and realize that you know, the reason why these things don't happen in other countries um, isn't because there aren't bad guys in, their, in other countries. It isn't because there aren't necessarily, you know, people that have bad intentions in other countries. It's because it's a lot harder for people to get weapons like the like happened recently um, or even at my high school in those countries for those individuals. Um, it doesn't prevent everything, but it, we see these laws do work that are in place. And we need serious action from the Biden administration. We need serious action from Republican senators to break through the filibuster that is actively killing our children, that is killing our parents, that is killing our, our friends and family every day across this country. Uh, David, we're, we've seen, we've now seen this, this Christmas season version of it. He was using his Christmas present that his parents decided he should have, this, this homicidal child with uh, homicidal fantasies, given this gun as a Christmas present, his mother laughing about it with him uh, when he gets caught searching for ammunition when he was at school. She says to him in a text, uh, you have to learn not to get caught. That's what this mother who's on the run tonight thought the lesson was. Let's listen to what uh, the prosecutor said today about charging parents in these situations, saying she absolutely doesn't believe that this is always the parents' fault, but this is what she said about this case. I am by no means saying that an active shooter situation should always result in a criminal prosecution against parents. But the facts of this case are so egregious. Reading this document, looking at it, reading the words, help me, with a gun, blood everywhere. This doesn't just have impact me as a prosecutor and a lawyer. It impacts me as a mother. The notion that a parent could read those words 
and also know that their son had access to a deadly weapon that they gave him is unconscionable. And, it, and I think it's criminal. I, I, it is criminal. David, what was your reaction to that? I completely agree with that. In this instance specifically, it seems to me, uh, based off the evidence that they talk about, that it, it is egregious. But, you know, Lawrence, one thing I would say, especially to parents that are out there, um, because frankly, young people already know this across the country. We know that we're in danger every day in our schools and our communities on a daily basis. Um, but I think every parent out there, um, frankly, should be terrified um, and know that there is no community right now in America that is safe from this issue. We have kids that are dying in their schools and in their communities on a daily basis. And we have leaders that are frankly not doing their job near enough uh, to the point that they can't even protect our young people. They can't protect you know, our family members. And we all need to be enraged about that because what, what I can't believe is that we see so many parents show up at school districts around the country enraged about the fact that their child needs to wear a mask in school, but we don't see anywhere near the same energy of parents you know, showing up necessarily as much as they should for the fact that their their child could be killed in their classroom at any moment in any community. Remember, Parkland was the safest community, one of the safest communities in Florida before 2018. And that's why many, many parents had their children going there. This is a threat to every community, no matter how wealthy or affluent or what your community looks like. It is. It doesn't matter. Every community is impacted by this. And we all should be deeply concerned about this and calling our legislators, Democrats, Republicans, independents, whoever it may be, because frankly, none of them are doing their job as well as they should be right now. And Senate Republicans especially should be ashamed of themselves because this is not a Democratic or Republican issue. This is an American issue that few other, basically no other high income country has to deal with. Even the ones that do have guns as a major part of their culture don't have this issue. And Americans need to come together and realize that this is a unique issue that our country faces that can be solved. And we need to call on Senate Republicans to to be part of the moral majority, as they've talked about being part of in the past, which is just frankly hilarious, considering um, how that is so clearly not the case, considering what happened, you know, with basically every piece of gun violence prevention legislation in my lifetime. Um, it's it's horrific and we need to act.